Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to do a video. This is lesson three in the series, preparing you for any standardized math exam. I'm going to go over four different things in this video. Finding the average, also known as the mean. How to find the median in the mode. How to find distance calculations. Distance over time is equal to speed. And then probability, a quick overview of probability, the likelihood of something happening. So let's go ahead and get started with finding the average or the mean. The mean is another word for average. The definition of the mean is that you add up all of the values and you divide by the number of values. So right here, you've got to count up how many values you have. One, two, three, four, five, six. You add all six of those numbers up to get 48. Then you take that sum of those values divided by the number of values, six to get eight. So the mean or the average of this set of numbers is eight. Here's another example. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you could do this, and then I'll go over it. Find the average of one third, eight twelfths, and five sixths. So go ahead and pause the video and try that problem out. Uh, make sure you have a notebook and pencil in front of you when you watch these videos. The more work you do, the better you're going to get at it. Um, the only way to get good at standardized math tests is by doing a lot of them. So really, you know, put paper to pencil, no, put pencil to paper and get these things figured out. All right, so to find the mean of these three values, the first thing you're gonna do is adding fractions. So the way you add fractions is you have to have that common denominator. That bottom number has to be the same. So I have a third, eight twelfths, and five sixths. I could reduce this fraction because four will go into here twice and four will go into here three times. So I got that one third, that two thirds, and that five sixths. The common denominator for these three fractions, now that I reduce that one, is going to be 6. So I have to get this to be a 6. I multiply by 2 over 2. Multiply by 1 doesn't affect the value of it. That gives me 2 6. I multiply this by 2 over 2 to get 4 6. And then I add the 5 6. So now I have my three fractions with that common denominator. I add across the top 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 and 5 is 11. I keep that common denominator of 6. So I have 11, 6. That is the sum of my three values. 11, 6 divided by the number of values. I got three values. So divided by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. It's a good problem because it's the mean, but it's also a test on how well you can add fractions, multiply, and divide fractions. So the way I divide by 3 is I multiply by a third. I check if anything will cancel, nothing will. I multiply across the top, 11. Multiply across the bottom and get 18. So if I've given this set of numbers, these three fractions, what is the average? The average is 11 18 The mean, 11 18 OK, now that you've done them, let me go ahead and go over them right here. I have these four numbers right here. I got to add them up and divide by 4. 6 and 6, 12 plus 5. 17, carry the 1, 6 and 9 is 15, 18, 26, so I have 267, and there are four values. So 4 goes into 267 six times to give me 24, 27. 4 goes into 27 also six times to give me 24, 3 left over, that's my remainder of 3. That 3 goes over the 4 to get 3 fourths. Whoops, three fourths. So my answer of the average of these four values is I add them all up to get 267, divide by four, and I get 66 and three quarters, or the decimal approximation, 66.75. All right, then the next problem right here, find the average of these three fractions. There's a lot of problems here because we've got to add fractions, which is a little tricky. We need common denominators. Then we're going to have to divide fractions, and we have mixed numbers. So the idea to find the average is add the 3 up, divide by 3. A couple ways to do it. I think I'm going to turn them into improper fractions. So I'm going to go 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13 halves. So I have 13 halves is the equivalent of that. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9 fourths. And then 1 times 6 is 6, plus 5 is 11 fourths. I have to add these three fractions. The way I do that is a common denominator. That common denominator is going to be 4. 
So I'm going to multiply this by a factor of 1. doesn't affect the value, but it gives me a 4. That's going to give me 26 fourths plus 9 fourths plus 11 fourths. The way I add fractions, I add the top number, the numerators, and keep the bottom number. 26 and 9 is 35. 35 plus 11 is 46. So the sum of those three fractions is 46 fourths. That's going to be 11 and a half or so, and that kind of looks about right. So then now that I have the sum of those three fractions, I divide by 3. Remember, dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have 46 fourths times 1 third times 1 third. Nothing will reduce, I don't think. Yeah, well, we got 2 will go into here 23 times and into here twice. So across the top, I'll have 23, and the denominator, I'll have 2 times 3, or 6, 23, 6. 23, 6, 6 goes into 23 uh, three times. To give me 18, 18 and 23 is 5, 6. So I have 3 and 5, 6. Whoops, 3 and 5, 6. So my answer is 3 and 5, 6. That's different than that answer there, so that's a wrong answer right there. There's a correct answer. Uh, glad you stayed with me through that one. That's a tough one. Finding the median. The median in this series of numbers, so the median is a middle number. Just like when you're driving down the freeway, the middle of the freeway is the median. So the first thing I have to do is put them in numeric order. So I look right here. Two is my lowest number. That one goes first. And then there's a three. And then there's a four. And then a five. And then a seven. Another seven. An eight an 8, and a 9. So now that I have them in numeric order, or in ascending order, I start crossing them out, and I'm looking for the middle value. If there's an odd number of values like 9, the middle value will be the fifth value, right? This is my first, second, third, fourth, fifth value, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth value. So the middle number is 7, so the median is 7. All right, go ahead and pause the video and find the median in this series of numbers in your notebook. And then unpause the video and then I'll go through it. First thing I'm going to do is put them in order. 35, 56, 69, 73, 78. Now they're in, in ascending order. This is an even number of values, right? There are eight of them. So I have two middle values. Because this value has three below it and this value has three above it. So when I have an even number of values, I'm going to take those two middle values, 73 and 78, and I'm going to average them. And remember, the average is the one value plus the other value divided by the number of values. So I take 73 and 78 to get 151, divided by 2 to get 75 and a half. Well, sample problems, go ahead and pause the video and do these two sample problems. Find the median of these two values, and then unpause the video and watch how I do them. All right, hopefully you did those two, so i got to put them in order. I have a 54 and a 54. I missed that 50. That 50 is my smallest value, so i got that 50. Then i got a 57 and another 57, 64, 66. So they're in order here, 64, 66 are all in order. i got one, two, three four, five, six, seven values, seven odd numbers. So the middle value will be 57. Let me double check that. Three below, three above. That's exactly right. So the median for that series of numbers is 57. Right here, we'll do the same thing. My lowest value is a two. So I got a two, a three, a three. Good Lord, what's wrong with that pen? A three, a three a 5, a 6, an 8, and an 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I missed one. I got a 7 right there. All right, now I got them in ascending orders. 8 values. That means it's an even number of values. My two middle values will be these two, right? 3 below, 3 above. I take those two middle values, 5 and 6, I add them together to get 11. 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. So my median for that second series of numbers 
is five and a half. It is a mode in this series of numbers. So we're looking at three different statistics here. The mean, the average, the median, the middle value, and now the mode, the most frequent, the one that happens the most. So let's take a look which one occurs the most here. There's one three, two threes, three threes. There are two twos. So there are more threes than anything else. So the maximum occurrence is three, or you say the mode is three. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and do this problem right here. Find the mode in the series of values, and then unpause the video, and here we are. We got one of these, two of these, three of the 54s, and two 57s. So the one that appears the most is the 54. Okay, next we're going to look at distance problems, distance, time, and speed. Those are three separate variables. One divided by the other is a ratio, and that ratio is going to equal speed. So speed is distance over time. These are really good problems to know and understand. They are tons of them in all standardized tests. So as an example right here, calculate the speed. I have a distance. I have a time. Speed is going to be equal to distance over time, so I take that distance and I divide it by the time of 4. 300 divided by 4 is 75. My units have to correspond miles per hour. Miles is distance, per is divided by, hour is time. So that's where you get distance over time. Another example, speed is equal to distance over time. If I wanted to solve for time, I could cross multiply, get t by itself. And if I had 300 divided by 75, I could see I'd have four hours. So again, if you have any of these two variables, you could always solve for the third variable. All right, here's a sample problem right here. Pause the video and do this problem in your notebook. Unpause the video and watch how I do it. On a trip, you drive 350 miles at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. So I'm going 350 miles at 50 miles per hour. So what I got right here is I'm going to divide that 350 by the 50 miles per hour to get seven hours. So my units will cancel, I'll give me seven hours. You then return home driving an average of 70 miles per hour. So you still go 350 miles, right? Divided by 70 miles per hour, it takes you five hours to go back. Right, the 350 divided by the 70 miles per hour, how long did the trip take all together? Well, seven hours to get there, five hours to get back, so a total of 12 hours travel time. Let's just look at some unit conversions. These are the things you just have to know for any standardized math exam. We have a few different things here, time, weights, uh, distances. First, there are 12 inches in a foot, and then there are three feet in a yard. So 3 times 12 will give you 36 inches in a yard. Then we go to weight. There are 16 ounces in a pound. Um, time usually work with 365 days uh, in a given year. And then there are long tons and short tons, a British ton, different weight. But usually in the U.S. you just stick with 2,000 pounds equal one ton. And there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we're in time here, 60 seconds in one minute. So 60 times 60, you're looking at 3,600 seconds per hour. What you're going to do to convert units is you're always going to multiply by a variable of 1. So as long as the numerator and denominator have the same weight, um, you can multiply by 1 to change the units. So here's a unit conversion problem right here. Add these two measurements together. You have feet and inches. So the way I usually do it is I add my inches together, I add my feet together. And then whatever over 12, I carry that up to a foot. So 9 inches and 7 inches, 16 inches. 4 feet and 5 feet is 9 feet. 12 goes into here one time with 4 left over. So that additional foot right here, that additional foot right here goes up here to give me 10 feet, and then there are the 4 remaining inches. So this 4 foot 9 inches plus 5 foot 7 inches is equal to 10 foot 4 inches. All right, I'll cover this answer up right here. Pause the video and do this problem right here. And then make sure you're doing it in your notebook so you're keeping track of your notes. Stay orderly working in pencil. 
uh, then I'll go ahead and do the problem after you unpause the video. So I got eight hours, 30 minutes, minus five hours, 48 minutes, right? Well, 30 minus 48, I can't do that. So I got to borrow one hour from right here. So I'm going to borrow one hour, make this seven hours, 60 minutes in an hour. I'm going to add that 60 to that 30 to get 90. So seven hours, 90 minutes, same thing as eight hours, 30 minutes. Now that I've done that, I could do 90 minus 48 to get 42 minutes, seven minus five to get two hours, 42 minutes. All right, next we're going to look at probability. Probability is a really cool topic, a lot of applications, and always a lot of standardized math problems and probability. Probability is defined as a likelihood of an event. All probabilities have to be between zero and one. And probability is defined by the number in the event divided by the number in the sample space. So if I have a class of 30 students, 14 of them are women, I randomly pick one in the class, what's the probability that's a woman? It'll be 14 over the total number of 30, and then you could reduce that fraction, convert it to a percent or a decimal. So probability, again, is defined as the number in the event over the number in the sample space. So probability, so here's an example right here. I have a single die. I roll that die. What's the probability of getting a three? Well, how many things are on that die? It's a six-sided die. So the total possibilities is six. How many threes are there? There's one. So the probability of throwing a die and getting a three is a number in the event one divided by the number in the sample space six. That kind of okay, pause the video and go ahead and do this problem right here. Uh, then unpause the video and then uh, we'll run through it. All right, so in a military camp, there are eight artillerymen. So I'm going to write that down. Eight artillerymen, seven infantrymen, and five tank crew, right? For a special mission, a soldier is to be chosen at random. What is the probability a tank crewman will be chosen? So what's the probability that out of these total, a tank crewman will be chosen? So i got to figure out the total number of values, 8, 7, 15, 20. So there's a total of 20. The event is picking a tank person. So it's going to be 5 out of 20. 5 out of 20 can reduce to 1 quarter. 5 goes into there one time, into there four times. So what's the probability of it? 1 fourth, 25% or 0.25. Here's another sample problem. Pause the video and try and do this problem, and then we'll roll through it. Um, if you need more help to do well on a standardized exam, this is a great web page to go to right here. This is Colfax Math. So this is a math preparation exam channel, a practical math channel to help you be a better math test taker. So let's go ahead and do this problem. I have 10 red marbles, so 10 red, four green marbles. It's going to be four out of the total number That probability is going to be 4 out of a total number of 14. That could reduce down. 2 will go into here twice. 2 will go into here 7 times. And your reduced fraction will be 2 sevenths. All right, well, this is Colfax Math. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. The more you practice, the more standardized test type problems you do, the better you get at it. Just keep working at it. This video, again, just a quick recap, was finding the average, also known as the mean. The mean is all the values added together divided by the number of values. The median, the median is going to be the middle number. The mode is the one that happens most frequently. Then we looked at distance calculations. Uh, speed is a distance over time, miles over hours. If you have two of those three variables, you could always solve for the third variable. So again, speed is equal to distance over time. We looked at some unit conversions, and then we talked about probability, the likelihood of, of something happening. Probability is, first it has to be a random experiment, meaning it has to be a random outcome, and it's defined as a number in the event over the number in the sample space. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with them. Thank you for watching.